The first official coaches poll dropped today or yesterday, and we're talking about it today. Absolutely crazy where the Gophers ended up. Find out why on today's show. Okay, you are no locked on happens, Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. Yes, 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 let's get it. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And it's football time, folks. It's football time. The official first coaches poll was released yesterday. We're talking about that today on the show. But first, when it comes to go for sports, you want to be following this podcast. So be sure to follow wherever you get podcasts, whether that be Spotify, iTunes, Apple Pods, Stitcher, you name it, be sure to find us at Locked On Golden Gophers and please subscribe on the YouTube channel. It's a quick and simple and easy press. You don't even have to have a YouTube account. As long as you have an email or a Gmail account, you can still follow along at YouTube and get the update when we post new videos. So please subscribe on YouTube. We're building the community over there. And you know what, folks? It's time to jump in. Now, normally I would move on to our defensive player profiles, but I think these next two days we're going to have more updates. We have this coaching poll, which I couldn't I couldn't let it slide. I could not let it slide seeing where the Gophers were officially ranked. We'll get into that. But tomorrow or today, as I, uh, I'm recording this the day prior, so when you're hearing it, it will be today. Today, Tuesday the 9th, we have a gopher practice, which I will be at, uh, and I will give you an update on what I'm seeing and maybe any differences, changes from Saturday. We'll have a good show on that with some updates, and then we will get into the defensive player profiles for the rest of the week to close it off. So we have a good week coming up, but let's, let's get into the meat and the bones of this podcast today. The first official coaches poll in the Gophers, where they ranked. You know what? I, I'm not even going to hide it anymore. If you haven't seen it yet, you're going to find out. But it was absolutely, absolutely disrespectful. Disrespectful. No, the Gophers are not in the top 10, nor should we be. You know, we have to earn that rank. We have to earn anywhere near that top 10. Heck, I'm not even mad that the Gophers aren't in the top 25. Now, maybe, just maybe, there could be a case made for that heading into the season, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I can understand not being in the top 25. But 43? 43. That is where the Gophers would be when it comes to this coach's poll rank right now as it stands. 43, that is a downright travesty. That is disrespect. That is terrible. Just just wild, in my opinion. It's disrespectful. If this wasn't a family-friendly podcast, this episode would have needed to be rated explicit, just like those albums, just like the tracks, because your boys got some words for this coach's poll. You're telling me Wisconsin came in at 20. Okay, sure. You're telling me Iowa came in at 26. All right. You're telling me Penn State came in at 27. Fine. But the Gophers are 43. 43. The same Gophers team that beat Wisconsin last year by double digits and led in nearly every statistical category in the Iowa game and lost by less than a touchdown late. One of the most fluky games of the entire season. The same Gophers team that has had 
a better or fairly similar record to the Penn State program over the last three years and the last time they played, the Gophers were 17th in the nation, Penn State was fourth, and they came out with the dub against Penn State. That same program returning a lot of production. A team that was 9-4 and four had the opportunity to at least be 11-2 and two last season, if not fumbling on easy wins. That same team is nearly 20 spots lower than all of those programs. 20 spots. Make it make sense. I'm just, I, I'm not even saying that we need to be ahead of those schools. I'm not even saying that. But the jump, the, the jump of nearly 20 spot difference between all of those schools. I mean, we're 23 behind Wisconsin. We're just under 20, so uh, 17 and 16 for Iowa and Penn State. That big of a gap for teams that we are right there with competitively each of the past full seasons that we've had with P.J. Fleck as the head coach. 20 spots lower just shows me that these coaches either strongly dislike PJ and the way that he is running things over here with the Gophers as we row the boat, or they're severely underestimating a legitimate and growing program. I was shocked to see 43. Now, I'll get into at the end of the show where I think realistically we should be, and it's not up in the 20s. I don't have us up in the 20s. I'm not being a homer. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. Two nine-plus winning seasons in the last three years, the only slip-up coming from the COVID year where we were heavily, heavily impacted as a team by both COVID and injuries, the only slip-up year. Otherwise, you've had nine-plus winning seasons in the two full years outside of that. One of the best running back tandems in the nation coming back healthy. A defense that was top 10 in the nation last year and returns eight players with many games started last year on that defensive front, not the front in general, but on the defensive side of ball. This ranking just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, 43 is just, and that's not, it's not even saying that 43 is terrible. It's not, 43 is respectable, especially heading into a season, but comparatively, comparatively that far behind Wisconsin, that far behind Iowa, that far behind Penn State, and that's just in the conference, folks. That's just me bringing up schools in the conference that are ahead of us. Just wait until I talk about the schools that are outside of the conference that made it in front of the Gophers, which we're talking about next. But first, I wanna talk about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. It's time as we're gearing up for the fall, People are looking for jobs and you want people on your team to help your small business. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the people that you want to talk to faster. You create a job post within minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach the network of over 810 million users on LinkedIn. Then you add your job and add a purple hiring frame so people know that you are looking to hire employees. You can use tools like screening questions to help make it easier for you to focus on the right candidates. And it's why small businesses have rated LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates. And there are so many people in today's day and age that are looking for jobs. LinkedIn has even seen nearly 40 million jobs, job seekers each week on their site. Each week, 40 million job seekers so you need to head on over to LinkedIn if you are a small business looking to hire and you can post about your job for free. That's right, free 99, zero dollars. You can post about your job and get tapped in to that massive network. All you have to do is post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post about your job for free. Now, as I'm trying to calm down from this absurd ranking, in my opinion, I just want to thank you for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers sports. 
I'm excited. It is season time. We're going to get mailbag segments going. We're going to have different analysts coming on to talk about the Gophers with us. We are going to have opponent opponent hosts and do crossover pods with other schools that we're playing. It's going to be a good time to be here on the Lockdown Golden Gophers podcast. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube and don't miss one minute of the action. But let's talk about the teams that are ahead of the Gophers that should not be from other conference when it comes to the coaching poll, the coaches poll that was released yesterday. Now, in this poll, you know, the top 25, I'm not going to dive into it because it's it's who you'd suspect, suspect for the most part. But even looking at that 28 to 42, that group of schools in front of us, I'm going to give you schools that finished in the rankings to end the season last year. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. BYU, sure, put them ahead of us. Louisiana State, sure, I guess put them ahead of us. They finished ranked last season, sure. South Dakota State, okay. Utah State, all right. Now BYU comes in at 29, Louisiana State at 30. South Dakota State, or not South Dakota State, San Diego State, correct myself, my apologies, San Diego State coming in at 34, and then Utah State coming in at 38. I'll give you them. They finished ranked last year. They earned that rep. They earned that status. They earned that honor. So sure. I'll even give you Tennessee, who came in at 28. I'll give you Fresno State, who came in at 35. I'll give you Mississippi State, who came at 36, because the football world is always obsessed with quarterbacks. So they're going to drool over guys like Rodgers, like Hooker, like Hayner. They're going to drool over those guys because they're quarterbacks that have produced high-level numbers in the passing game, and coaches love that. People in general, football lovers, football watchers, football People with football knowledge love good quarterback play. So I'll give it to you. Sure. But what I won't give to you is this group of schools. Auburn, who came in at 31. They only have one season above six wins in the last four years. UCF, Central Florida, came in at 32. Same record versus weaker competition, and they lost their starting quarterback who has been the forefront of their success over the past three seasons. UNC, who came in at 33, a worse record over the last three years, lost their star quarterback, worse conference. You're getting the trend here. Florida, who had an absolutely joke of a year last year from their standards especially has a new coach coming in have people already up in arms about what's been happening with their recruiting and they're just a big old question mark air force coming in at 39 they had a respectable defense and a respectable run game but their defense was not as productive as minnesota's last year their run game their run game When healthy, our run game is right there and comparable, and we pass the ball better than Air Force. Our coach has been more consistent than Air Force. We've saw more success over the past three seasons than Air Force. It just, it doesn't make sense. UCLA, worst team, weaker schedule, not as many wins. Boise State. Definitely respectable with Bachmeyer at QB, Halani at running back, but still often play a much weaker schedule and coming off a worse year against a weaker schedule. App State, 42, similar trends as above, similar record against weaker schedule in a weaker conference, but somehow they all rank above the Gophers. That's just wrong. It's sad and wrong. I mean, we had a better defense in total defense in yards per play in passing yards allowed in rushing defense than every single one of those teams i just listed 
our defense was a top 10 defense in the nation. But we don't get respected like that. We had very similar or better rushing production than almost all of those schools that I just listed. With our fourth and fifth string guys putting up the most yardage because of the injuries that impacted our room. I'm betting we have more returning playmakers than every single one of those teams listed above that I just said in that grouping. So how? How it just doesn't make sense. I'm I'm actually distraught by it. And you know what? Let's talk about where I think we should actually be realistically, which wouldn't be as offensive. And you know what? We might be talking a matter of two or three slots higher. We might be talking a matter of 10 to 15 slots higher. Let's find out about it next. All right. Now that I've calmed down a little bit, I've cooled off, and I'm willing to take a look at the bigger picture, I just want to stress before we jump into where I think is a better realistic starting point for the Gophers, I just want to jump into the fact that I'm trying to remove the bias from this this stance I'm taking as well. I'm trying to look at it from an outside lens of returning production, what was done not only last season, but also the most recent seasons, a three-year chunk. I think that's a great way to look at a program because in those three-year chunks, you often see a class of guys. So you might have some top-end guys in that first year of the three years, but you have guys rotating under. So you can get a holistic picture of the program, of the class, especially if under the same coaching regime. So looking at that three-year window and looking at last year and looking at production coming back, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to see teams like Auburn, who has been terrible the last few years, like Air Force, who had one good year and all of a sudden they're rated better than the Gophers, UCLA, who finally got an eight-win season under Chip Kelly, but still less than what we saw from the Gophers in a weaker conference. Boise State and App State, yes, you play and you get possibly 10 wins, but you know recently they've had seven and eight win seasons and they play much, much weaker conference, but they somehow are ranked heading into this season higher. It just doesn't make sense, and that is why looking at those three aspects, the three-year window, the last year window, and also production returning, it just make it make sense. That's all I ask. So this is me taking my bias out and trying to look at it from an, a, an objective lens. Where should we realistic start? Now, given those schools that I listed in that past segment, in that past, before that last commercial ad that you heard, the Gophers should likely be around 35. That is my opinion, around 35. Now you could give it a plus or minus maybe two or three spots. So maybe they're up around 32 at the very best. Maybe they're at 38 at the very worst. Now, 38 is only five slots higher, but still that 30s, that makes more sense. And not only, why am I stressing about possibly five spots, but up to potentially almost 10 spots higher? Why am I up in arms about that? Because at this 35-ish range, it would allow the Gophers to creep into a top 25 rank and in that contention of the top 25 with a 3-0 and non-conference start and then going and beating a big win team like Michigan State. And that is a realistic expectation. That is something that makes sense. Michigan State is ranked in the top 15. So you come in, you win those non-conference games that you should, hopefully handily, and then you take on a top-ranked team and you beat them. That should put you in contention to be ranked in that top 25, even if it's in the lower section of that. Being at that around that 35 mark, that 32 to 38 range, that realistically puts you in that that vein, that, that, I wanna say, that square box of if you take that route, you win those first four games, you can work your way into the top 25 where you should have that respect. But with this, this 43 spot, Knowing that those top teams don't really shift down too much in the first four weeks, knowing that those middling and bottom teams really 
in that top 25 really only shift into maybe that mid 30s so that's where you're seeing the most of the movement within that early season with this 43 rank start the gophers are likely wouldn't be able to crack into that top 25 until they get through the penn state week which is game like five or six where you're taking on a michigan state a purdue and a penn state plus your non-conference games that's at least six games in through the season there might actually be another one in there but you probably don't crack the rankings until you beat both michigan state and purdue and possibly penn state you might even have to go undefeated in that section to even crack the top 25 and get respect respect get respect from the coaches and the coaches poll and even the media because the media is going to take this coaches poll and it will likely be similar it won't be exact it won't be it won't be the copy paste but it'll likely be similar you probably won't see the gophers too far if even above 40 because of something similar like this which means the gophers are going to go six plus games in the season before they can probably even sniff getting the respect of a ranking a top 25 ranking i just think that is wild for a team that has been up near the top of this conference as far as the last few full seasons for a team that is looked at as a potential winner of its division in the big 10 it's just like the 43 the thing that stands out the most with that 43 is the 20 slots basically behind iowa wisconsin and penn state 20 slots that doesn't make sense that's not realistic and that's why i'm a little bit disrespected by it all that 32 to 38 range is perfect that's where i believe is more realistic and that's where we'll close off the show let me know what you think down below in the comments am i being too mad about this am i too disrespected on this is it fair should we be even higher than that? What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate you listening. Tomorrow, I will give you a recap on what we saw in the media press con- or the media practice availability. And we'll talk about maybe updates from Saturday to Tuesday, what we're seeing in the practices. And then we'll dive into the defensive positional rankings starting the day after that. I thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow. This is Kane Rock.